Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing, uh, I'm just going to read some creepy pastas to you guys. Uh, before each creepy pasta, I'm going to give you a little bit of backstory, and afterwards, I'm going to tell you my thoughts on that creepy pasta. So, without further ado, this video is going to be kind of longer than my other videos. So, being honest, for this first one, it's called Night Ship. Uh, I really don't know the backstory of this. I just randomly found it on the Creepy Pasta website, and yeah, so I decided, why not? I'm gonna go ahead and give it a read. Night shift. I worked the night shift at a local mom and pop convenience store at the front of my neighborhood. We sell snacks, drinks, milk, bread, all the normal stuff that people need but aren't willing to make a traditional run to the grocery store for. There was talk about adding a gas pump out front, but it hasn't happened yet. As a result, the night gets a bit slow at times. Of course, we got our usual druggie who strolls in and gets his soda or use the restroom, but sometimes I'll sit in the corner for nearly an hour before someone strolls in. It can get a bit boring at times, but I've always got a good book or YouTube videos to keep my mind occupied. I am supposed to clean the store in slow periods of my shift, and I do, but that never takes me long. Each night, I usually, uh, around 1 to 2 a.m., I finish the chore list and I find myself surfing the web or plop down and enjoying some novel. The night in the encounter was like any other day. It had been slow. The store was quiet. No one had come in for an hour. I was rereading my favorite Stephen King book when I heard a thudding sound coming from the inventory room. I jumped at the noise. I know I'm not very it's not very manly of me, but I haven't expected it. Besides, I, I was pretty tense and part of my book. I look up and the digital clock sitting on the counter. It read 3:12 a.m. I didn't really think anything of the noise. I was just I just assumed it was something that fell off the shelves. Even still, I felt the chill crawl it all its way up and down my spine. I remember glancing outside and seeing a sea of thick fog blanketing the landscape. This wasn't too uncommon. There was a lake across the street from the store and occasionally fog would drift in. Still, I couldn't recall a time when the fog was quite as thick as this. I remember thinking that something could be standing out there and watching me and I wouldn't even know. But it was more than that. At that moment, I knew there was something out there. It was instinctual, a primal sense developed over the years. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up and the goose flesh began to break out all over my arms. I was too frightened to get up from my spot at the cash register. I knew that I ought to investigate the sound in the back room, but I couldn't get my body to respond. I sat there, unable to look away from the front glass door. Trying to desperately peer through the thickening fog, I couldn't see anything, but I was certain if I turned away now, the thing in the dark would rush forward. The fear was multiplying, growing into a living creature, trying to tear its way from my stomach. I felt cold sweat begin to pour from my brow, steaming into my open eyes and causing them to stink. I couldn't blink. I was so worried that the consequences if I saw it. Two pinpricks of the light cut through the dense fog. Temporary blinded me. My panic rose to a crescendo and my heart started to beat out of my chest. I half ducked behind the counter when I saw the figure approaching the door. My hand slid across the underside of the counter to find a panic button. That would alert the police when the door swung wide. I sighed and felt a physical weight lift onto me. Looked, I looked at him and I said, yeah, sorry man, you just startled me. I couldn't see you approach the door until you opened it with all the fog out there. Hey, I hear you there. I could hardly see the road in front of me. Honestly, it's a bit unnerving out there. It makes you think about some strange thoughts, said the man, looking a bit pensive. Right, I could have sworn that someone was out there. I mean, I guess you were, I said with a nervous laugh. Yeah, I was. It, it's nice like this that makes me think, said the man seriously. I felt uncomfortable with his answer. He just remained there motionless, staring at the door in the back room. I haven't investigated the noise in the back, and the man's blank look made me feel uneasy. The silence in the room was beginning to weigh on me. I couldn't take one moment of it, and I asked, Think about what? The man smiled a toothy grin and said, Life, death, and the moments in between. I try not to think about the first 
too often after all who can truly know anyone can if they are willing to pay the right price for it said the man a hungry look glamoring his eyes you might be right there's always a price to pay for knowledge i mean i'm pretty sure adam and eve learned that lesson and they weren't still paying for it today true enough i suppose but how is one supposed to live when one doesn't know the reason for existence asked the man i guess it's our duty to do the best with what we have in front of us and the truth huh replied the man what truth no one's truth is here many claim to have the answers but very few have more than just a hot breath because many are liars the truth doesn't exist that doesn't seem to be an accurate conclusion either said the man does there have to be a singular truth why must it be universal can't something be true and to one person and not true for the other I would say that the truth by its essence must be true to all or else there is no truth the tr a truth is true and a truth is true to you and to everyone else but not another the truth is all it is merely a solution are you content to live a life of solutions rather than one of true knowledge asked the man the question is superfluous of course i'd rather live a life of universal knowledge but who knows such truth and if i claim to know the truth what would you say to that answered the man i'd say you're either insane or a liar honest enough answer but i am neither i am something more when one sees the truth they know it so look and see for yourself said the man he took a couple steps forward coming fully into the light and i noticed his features for the first time he had a severe look a hawkish nose looked as if it had been broken at least once the landscape of his face was jumbled of cracks and wrinkles dominated by a large scar that started right below his nose and continued through his lips stopping at his jawline it was the man's eyes that made me feel the most uneasy they were black as tar they drilled into me making eye contact with the man was like staring directly into a black hole they seemed to draw you deeper there was a little light shining in the middle of the man's pupil i watched as it bounced and glowed coming closer than the drawing away and it was as if beaconing for me to follow when i saw that gleam i wanted nothing more than to follow it and the dang consequences there was a beauty to the way it pulsated that held me captivated. I looked and saw and knew that there were secrets to be found on the depths. I've also known that if I followed this light, there would be no coming back, but I didn't care. I wanted to know, I wanted to see the mysteries of the universe were held by the gyrating light bobbing in the abyss. I felt my soul beginning to be ripped apart from my body, torn from my essence, and sent spiraling down to a black tunnel towards the brilliant light. It was at the same crashing sound I've heard before, the back room that broke the trance. I looked away from his eyes, and I came back smashing the reality. My mind was scrambled, and it took me a second to get back to my normal state. This creature standing before me it was just as confused as I was, clearly not used to his prey escaping it so easily. For a moment, we looked at each other in utter shock. The man smiled at me, showing ragged, pointed teeth. I looked away in disgust, trying to feel for the silent alarm button on the bottom of the counter. My hand brushed the button I pressed with all my strength. The man remained standing there, obviously motionless, and he could have been a statue for all I knew. He didn't breathe, nor did his heart beat. Those black eyes never blinked, and I didn't dare make eye contact with him. Finally, he looked down at his watch and said, the time is nearly there. What that man turned and strolled directly out the door had come from, I watched him walk casually into the fog. I couldn't see clearly, so I'm not entirely sure what I saw, but the figure almost seemed to melt as if he was evaporating to the mist. One moment he was there, the next he wasn't. To this day, I still don't know what I saw that night. Sonic EXE is about like this cursed uh, video game, which is a huge, like they, they do that a lot in Creepy Process. It's about this cursed Sonic CD uh that he puts into his computer a bunch of weird stuff starts happening this is one of the most popular creepy bosses of all time um i'm sure you have seen uh this image uh before so i i mean you should know this one but i'm gonna go ahead and read it
I'm a total Sonic the Hedgehog fan, much like everyone else. I never liked the newer games, but I don't mind playing the classics. I don't think I ever played any glitchy or hacked games before, though I don't think I want to play any after the experience I had. It started on a nice summer afternoon. I was playing Sonic Unleashed. I like how you get to explore the towns in it. Until I noticed out of my peripheral vision that the mailman had arrived and put something in my mailbox as usual and left. I paused my game to go see what I got in the mail. The only thing in the mailbox was a CD case for computers and a note. Uh, I took it inside. I looked at the note first and realized it was from my dear friend Kyle. Let's just call him that. Whom I haven't heard in the last two weeks. I know that because I recognize his handwriting. Even though what is weird is how it looked. It looked badly written and scratchy and somewhat difficult to read. As if Kyle was having a hard time writing it down and did it in a hurry. This is what he wrote. Tom, I can't take it anymore. I have to get rid of this thing somehow before it's too late. And I was hoping you'd do it for me. I can't do it, he's after me, and if you don't destroy the CD, he'll come after you too. He's too fast for me. Please, Tom, destroy this godforsaken disc before he comes for you too. It's too late for me. Destroy the disc and you'll destroy him, but do it quick, otherwise he'll catch you. Don't even play the game, it's just what he wants. Destroy it, please. Kyle. Well, that was certainly weird, even though Kyle is my best friend and I haven't seen him in two weeks, I didn't do what he asked me. I didn't think that a simple gaming disc would do anything bad to him. After all, it's just a game, right? Boy, I was wrong about that. Anyway, I looked at the disc and it looks like an ordinary computer CDR disc, except it had a black marker on it written Sonic.exe, and it was much unlike Kyle's handwriting, meaning that he must have gotten it from someone else, like a pawn shop or eBay. When I saw Sonic on the writing of the SD, I was actually excited and wanted to play it, since I'm a big Sonic fan. I went into my room, turned on my computer, and put the disc and installed the game. When the title screen popped up, I noticed that it was the first Sonic game. I was like, awesome, because I said I like the earlier classics, and the first thing I noticed out of place is when I pressed start, there was a split second where I saw a title image that turned into something much different, something that I now consider horrifying before cutting to black. I remember what the image looked like in that split second before the game cut to black. The sky had darkened, the towel emblem was rusted and ruined, the Sega 1991 said Sega 666, and the water turned red like blood, except it looked hyper realistic. But the freakiest thing was that in a split second, the, in that frame, Sonic had his eyes were pitch black and bleeding with two glowing red dots staring right at me and his smile has stretched wider to the edge of his face. I'd rather, I was rather disturbed about the image when I saw it, although I figured it was just a glitch and forgot about it. After it cut to black, and it stayed like that for about 10 seconds or so, and then another weird thing happened. The save file select from Sonic the Hedgehog 3 popped up, and I was like, what the heck? What is wrong with this? What, what, what's this doing in the first Sonic game? Anyway, I noticed something was off. The background was the dark cloudy sky of the bad Stardust Speedway level from Sonic CD. And there was only three save files. The music that was, it was so creepy. It was from Caverns of Winter music from Earthbound. But it only, it was extended and seemed to have been in reverse. And the image and the save file where you see a preview of the level you're on is just red static for all three files. What freaked me out more was the character select. It showed only Tails, Knuckles, and to my surprise, Dr. Robotnik. Now, I was sure something was up. I mean, how can you play as Robotnik in the classic Sonic game for crying out loud? That's when I realized this wasn't a glitchy game. It was a hacked game. Yeah, it, was, it looked hacked. It was really creepy, but as a smart gamer, I wasn't scared. Or at least, I tried not to be. I told myself that it was a hacked game and there's nothing wrong with that. Anyway, shaking off uh, the creeped out feeling I had, I picked file 1 and chose Tails. I selected and got started. The game froze for about 5 seconds till I heard a creepy pixelated laugh that sounded like an awful log like the Kifa guy from Final Fantasy before cutting to black. The screen stayed black for about 10 seconds more then it showed the typical level title thing, except for simplistic shapes were different shades of red and the text only showed he'll act one the screen faded 
from the uh, level title vanish and revealing Tails and Green Hill Zone from Sonic 1. The music was different though. It sounded like a peaceful melody in reverse. Anyway, I started playing and had Tails running like you would in any of the classic Sonic games. But what was odd is that Tails was running along a level that there was nothing but flat ground and a few trees for 5 minutes. But that was when a peaceful music started to lower down into slow deep tones very slowly as I kept going. I suddenly saw something and I stopped to see what it was. It was one of the small animal friends lying dead on the ground bleeding. That was when the music started to slow down. Tails was shocked and sad and looked on his face I never saw him have before. So I had to move along as he kept that worried look on his face and he kept moving. I saw more dead animals and Tails moved past them, looking more and more worried as the music lowers. And he moves past more dead animals. I was shocked to see how many they all died. They looked like somebody killed them rather than gruesome ways. A squirrel was hanged around the tree, what appeared to have his in tails hanging out. And a bunny had all four of his limbs torn off and a duck had his eyes gouged out with his throat slit. I felt sick to my stomach when I saw this massacre and apparently so did tails. After a few more seconds, there were more uh, animals and the music seemed to have stopped. So I still kept tails to continue. After a minute passed, the music stopped. Tails was running up a hill, and then he stopped. It wasn't until I saw why Sonic was there on the other side, uh, and he was there with the black, with his back against Tails and eyes closed. Tails looked happy to see Sonic, but then his smile flattered, obviously noticing that Sonic wasn't responding to him, if not acting like he was totally oblivious to Tails' presence. Tails walked slowly towards Sonic, and I noticed that I wasn't even moving my keyboard to make him move, so this had to have been a cutscene. Suddenly, I began to have a growing feel of dread as Tails walked closer to Sonic to get his attention. I felt that Tails was in danger of something bad was going to happen. I heard a faint static growing louder as Tails was but inches away from Sonic and stopped, and he stopped and stuck out his hand to touch him. That was foreboding feeling that my gut was growing stronger and I felt the urge to tell Tails to get away from Sonic as the static grew louder. Suddenly, in a split second, I saw Sonic's eyes open and they were black with those red glowing dots, just like the title image. But there, was a, there wasn't a smile. And then what happened, the screen turned off and the static sound was off. It stayed black for about 7 seconds and then a white text appeared from the following message that says, Hello, do you want to play a game with me? At this point, I was creeped out. I didn't want to continue the game, but my curiosity got the better of me when I was taken to a different level, with the level tile now saying, Hide and Seek. This time, I was in Angel Island from Sonic 3, and it looked like everything was on fire. Tails looked as though he was scared out of his wits this time. Actually, he looked at me and made a frenetic gesture telling me as if he wanted to get out of the area he was in as fast as possible. I was starting to get freaked out by this. I mean, Tails was actually breaking the fourth wall, telling me to get him out of there. So I pressed down on the arrow key as hard as I could and made him run as fast as he could. A pixelated version of that creepy theme when you meet Shadow and Arc at Robotic from Sonic Adventure 2 was playing. And I made Tails trek through the desolate forest, trying to help him escape from whatever was trying to, he was trying to run from. Suddenly I heard that creepy laugh again. That awful kill fell left. Right after 10 seconds had passed, I helped Tails run through the forest, and then I started seeing flashes of Sonic popping everywhere on the screen again in those black and red eyes. The music changed to that suspenseful drowning jingle, as I see. Sonic behind Tails, slowly gaining up on him, flying. Sonic wasn't running, he was actually flying. The flying pose and the sprite making look like very similar to Metal Sonic's flying pose in Sonic CD, except it was just Sonic and he had the black and red eyes again, only. This time he had a more deranged looking grin on his face. He looked as though he was enjoying the torment he was giving a poor little fox as he gained up on him. Suddenly when Tails tripped another cutscene, the music stopped and Sonic vanished. Tails laid there and started crying for 15 seconds. The scene was rather upsetting to watch and I kind of teared up myself. But then Sonic appeared right in front of Tails and Tails looked up in horror. Blood started to come down on the blackened eyes as Sonic's grin slowly grew and his face looked down at the horrified fox. I could do nothing but watch. Just as just in a split second, Sonic lunged at Tails right before the screen went to black and there was a loud screeching noise that only lasted 5 seconds. The text returned only this time and said, you're too slow, wanna try again? And then that god awful laugh came with it. 
I was so shocked by what happened. Did Sonic murder Tails? No, he couldn't have. He had Tails are supposed to be best friends, right? Why did Sonic do that to him? I shook the shock off as I was brought back to the character select, and the same file that had Tails in it was different. Tails was no longer in the box itself, but in the TV screen itself, which was flickering and red static, and Tails' expression scared me. His eyes were black and bleeding. His orange fur had gone black, and he had an expression of anguish in his face, trying to ignore it. I picked Knuckles next. So as I was playing with Knuckles, the screen went black and it said, you can't run. And then Sonic was chasing Knuckles through this like dark zone, I, the scrap brain zone, I'm pretty sure. And it was just so creepy and scary until Sonic finally caught up to Knuckles. And text popped up on the screen saying, found you. I was now scared Sonic found Knuckles already. What's going on? Anyway, the rest at it came again and then it was black in the level. Knuckles looked like he was panicking and Sonic was nowhere to be found. And at this time, that high-pitched squealing from Sonic Hills 1's final boss was playing. Was this some kind of boss battle with Sonic? I hope to God it wasn't, honestly. Suddenly, Sonic appeared right next to Knuckles in what appeared to be a pixelated black smoke. I made Knuckles turn around and then punch Sonic, but Sonic vanished in the black pixelated smoke before I could even land a hit. That terrible laugh went off again, with Sonic appeared right behind Knuckles again, and then I made him punch him again. Sonic vanished again, laughing. Knuckles was panicked even more, and even though I felt like I was going crazy, Sonic was practically playing with us. He was playing a sick, twisted little mind game with me and Knuckles. Another cutscene played as Knuckles fell to his knees and clutched his head sobbing. I felt his agony. Sonic was actually driving us both crazy. In a split second, Sonic lunged at Knuckles and the screen went black and another distorted screeching noise that lasted for three seconds. Another text message appeared. So how many souls do you play with so many times? Would you agree? I was brought back to the main menu, and this time the second file box had Knuckles on the TV screen. His red fur darkened, turned to a reddish gray, and his dreadlocks were dripping with blood, and his eyes were black and bleeding too. He looked of sadness on his face. I began to think that those are the actual characters trapped in those TV screens on the save files, but I couldn't believe it. I didn't want to believe it. So I shut off the game and I took a break. I took a nap, which I wish I hadn't, because then I had started to have the most disturbing nightmare. I was in a pitch black darkness, though I was under the light given off by the lamp that hung high above my head. I could hear the cries of knuckles and tails nearby. They were saying stuff like, help us, and why did you let us do that to me, and run away before he gets you too. Their cries died out, and then I heard Sonic laugh. His laugh sounded like a distorted Kifa laugh. You're a lot of fun to play with, kid. Just like your friend Kyle. Although he didn't last long. I was scared and looking around for the source of the voice. Won't be long until now until you join him and all my other friends. I saw him walking towards me, flickering in and out in several directions. You can't run, kid. You're in my world now. Just like the others. And he grabbed me. I saw his bleeding black and red eyes, his grinning face, and I woke up in a fright. After a couple hours, I decided to continue playing the game. I don't know why, but I had to know. I had to figure out why this was happening. So I turned on the computer and turned on the game and selected Robotnik next. I still thought it was wacky that you could play as Robotnik, but anyway, the level title appeared and this is what time it said, dot dot dot, which I found really freaky. This time I was in some kind of hallway. Didn't really look like it was from any other classic Sonic games, though it had a pixelated style, the floor was shiny, and it was checkered, and the walls were a dark grayish purple with animated candle lights and a few dark blood stains here and there. And there was a dark red curtain hanging above the top part of the screen. Every 12 seconds or so, the red curtain always sways slowly, but whenever you're playing the game, you barely see it move. The music was oddly pleasant. A piano, rather, playing a sad yet peaceful song. But I knew better. The song that was played in Hill Act 1 only wasn't in reverse. Robotnik didn't have an entirely nervous look like Tails or Knuckles did. But he did have a suspicious look on his face and he was just a bit paranoid. He did a little animation when I left him standing there. He turned his head to the left and right and right at least twice when he shrugs at me, as if he has no idea where he is or what he's going on. Even though I was 
scared out of my mind about what was going to happen. I had Robotic continue onward. He did his usual running animation. You know, when you had beaten him at the end of the classic Sonic game and you chase him as we continued going through the hallway. As I led Robotnik down the stairs, I noticed that the walls have got darker and more reddish. The red torches are now an eerie blue, and we landed into another hallway. This one was longer than the last one, or at least it felt like it, and then we headed down another flight of stairs. This one was much longer, it took at least one full minute. And then I heard a horrid Keitha laugh again, and the music slowly faded until it was quiet, and the walls turned more dark and red, and the torches were a black flame now. When Robotnik landed on the third hallway, I noticed he now looked really creeped out, though he tried to hide it. I couldn't blame him. I was scared too. Suddenly, Sonic popped right in front of Robotnik, the same way he did to Knuckles and the Red Static. The Red Static lasted for about 15 seconds, and then it showed me the most unpleasant image. The image showed a hyper-realistic picture of Sonic standing in the darkness where you could only see his face and his head and his torso fade into black. And when I say hyper-realistic, I mean like it looked like he was so real you could see the lines in his blue fur as if you could only actually feel the fur you touched the screen. His face, oh god, he had the most horrifying smile I've ever seen. And that's saying something considering I saw that image at the start of the game. His eyes were wide and black once again, crying blood, which also looked hyper-realistic, and there were two small glowing red dots in those black eyes, staring right at me, as if it was staring into my mind. His grin was wide and demonic. It literally stretched to the sides of his face like the Church Street Cat, I don't know how to pronounce that, to be honest, guys, <laughs> except Sonic had fangs, very sharp fangs, much like the Werehog's teeth, except for the more vicious looking somewhat yellowish and from the look of it he had stains of blood and small bits of flesh on his lips and fangs as he ate some animal i stared at that gruesome image for a good 30 seconds never taking my eyes off it as i felt as if he was actually looking at me staring at me that face it, it just took 10 seconds for it to etch itself into my brain for good and then the screen flickered with the red static again three times and on the third time I heard the Kifa laugh again, except this time it sounded distorted and demonic even. I went back to the image again, except for this time there was a text again, though it was messed up, but it was pretty much one of the most horrifying things I looked at since I had this game. I. Am. God. It was when I read that message while looking at Sonic when it hit me. I realized right then and there. This Sonic was a monster, a pure evil, sadistic, all-powerful, nightmarish, demented monster, and all of his victims, including Tails, Knuckles, Robotnik, and possibly Kyle, are just his little toys, and the game is very his gateway to his chaotic, nightmarish world, the very hell his victims are trapped in. Suddenly, is an actual spirit... Suddenly, in an actual split second, I screamed as Sonic lunged at the screen, screeching loudly with his mouth wide open at unnatural length, revealing nothing but literal spiraling abyss of pure darkness before red static came again, and this time much louder and distorted. It was so loud that it hurt my ears. I yelled and grabbed my ears as the red static screeched for a good solid seven seconds. Then I stopped and showed nothing but a black screen. As I sat there staring at the black screen, one last text came up. Ready for round two, Tom? The Kifa laugh is now sounding more clear as if it was Sonic was right behind me. Played again three times as I looked at the text in shock and confusion. Then I got booted back to the main menu this time. And the third save file had the same TV image of Robotnik. And it looked like all the other ones. Tormented state as tails and knuckles Robotnik's skin were all turned a dull gray. His mustache drooped and had black. he had blackened. His eyes have broke and blood is coming from them as he se seemed more like a dead expression on his face. I looked at Tails, Knuckles, Robotic, and I cried a bit. I pitied them for their agony they're going through, and they're forever trapped within the game, forever tormented with by that horrid hedgehog, and always will be. The computer shut itself off. I couldn't turn it back on no matter what I did. I just sat there for maybe 25 seconds, horrified by what had just happened. Sonic is the very embodiment of evil. He tortures people who play this game in more ways than one. And then when he gets bored and drags you into the game, literally drags you to hell where he can play with you always as his toy. 
I can't get the game out of my computer. I think that it's stuck in there, but at least I managed to turn it back on for now. After I sat there for 25 seconds, I heard a voice right behind me like a whisper. Try to keep this interesting for me, Tom. As I turned around to see the voice came from, and what I saw made me scream. Sitting on my bed, staring right at me, was a sonic plushie smiling with the blood stains under its eyes. Man, I just love, I love Sonic.exe. It's one of my favorites. Even though it's kind of corny and kind of, you know, cheesy, it's still just so much nostalgia for this one. I mean, I remember playing the game that came out with it, like the, uh, or like the fan game of Sonic EXE. It's pretty fun. Actually, I could play it on the channel eventually, but I stick to this. So the last creepy pasta in this video is Suicide Mouse Died AVI, and it is the shortest one. It's only about five minutes long, but it's a classic, and I have to talk about it. Um, it's supposedly some lost Mickey Mouse footage that makes people kill themselves. I mean, so go ahead, enjoy this. So do you guys remember those Mickey Mouse cartoons from the 1930s? The ones that were just put on DVD a few years ago? Well, I hear there is one that's unreleased that even the most avid classic Disney fans don't know. According to the sources, it's nothing special. It's just a continuous loop, like the Flintstones, of a Mickey walking past six buildings that go on for two or three minutes before fading out. Unlike the cutesy tunes put in it, though, the song of the cartoon is not a song at all. It's just constant banging on a piano for a minute and a half, going from white noise to the other remainder of the film. It wasn't the jolly old Mickey we've come to love either. Mickey wasn't dancing, not even smiling. It's some kind of you're just kind of walking and as if you and I were walking and the normal facial expression but for some reason this time his head was tilted to the side as he kept a dismal look up until a year or two ago everyone believed that after I cut the black that was it when Leonard Martin was reviewing the cartoon to be put into the complete series he decided it was too junk to be in the DVD so he wanted to have a digital copy due to the fact that it was a creation of Walt but when he had a digitalized version of the computer to look up to the file, he noticed something. The cartoon was actually 9 minutes and 4 seconds long. That's what my source emailed to me. In full, um, he is a personal assistant of one of the higher executives at Disney. And an acquaintance of Mr. Malton himself. After it cut to black, it stayed like that until the 6th minute. Before going back to Mickey walking, the sound was different this time. It was a murmur. It wasn't a language, it was more like a gargled cry as the noise got more indistinguishable and loud over the next minute. The picture began to get weird. The sidewalk started to go in directions and seemed impossible to base on the physics of Mickey's walking and the dismal face of the mouse was slowly curling into a smirk. On the seventh moment, the, mur the murmur turned into a blood-curdling scream that kind of screamed painful to hear, and the picture was getting more obscure. Colors were happening that shouldn't even have been possible at the time. Mickey's face began to fall apart. His eyes rolled on the bottom of his chin like two marbles in a fishbowl, and his curled smile was pointing upward to the left side of his face. The buildings began to rumble, floating in the midair, and the sidewalk was still impossibly navigating in warp directions, a few seeming inconceivable with what we as humans have known to direction. Mr. Malton got disturbed and left the room, sending an employee to finish the video and take notes of everything happening up until the last second, and afterward immediately store the disc and the cartoon into the vault. The stored screaming lasted until eight, 8 minutes and a few seconds in. And then abruptly cuts the Mickey Mouse face at the credits at the end of every video with what sounded like a broken music box playing in the background. This happened for about 30 seconds and whatever. And what was happening in, between, in the remaining 30 seconds, I haven't been able to get a silver amount of information on. But from a security guard working under me who was making rounds outside of that room, he was told that... After the last friend, the police stumbled out of the room with pale skin saying, Real suffering is not known seven times before speedily taking the guard's pistol and offing himself on the spot. The thing I 
could get out of Leonard Maltin was that the last frame was a piece of Russian text that roughly said, The sights of hell bring its viewers back in. As far as I know, no one else has seen it, but there have been a dozens of attempts at getting the file on rapid share by employees inside the studios, for whom all of them have been properly terminated of their jobs. Whether it got online or not is up for debate, but rumors, uh, so rumors serve me right now. The online is somewhere under suicidemouse.avi. If you ever find a copy of the film, I want you to never view it and contact me by the phone immediately. Regardless of the time when a Disney death is discovered upon this as well, it has it means it has to mean something huge. Get back at me. I have yet to find a copy of this, but it is out there. I just know it. All the ones we talked about today, I do think Suicide Miles AVI is the um, the worst one. It's still good. It's not bad. It's it's not like scary or anything like that. I really did enjoy reading it. Um, but basically, uh, that's gonna be it for the video, guys. I mean, if you guys want to see more of this, I'll man down and make a part two, and eventually I'll put all these videos together into one super long video. So if you guys like the video, please comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.